In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Chris G asks us, why are there so many countries that have a name that ends in Stan? I was also wondering why we call people from many countries the name of their country ending with an an, like for example, Canada and Canadian. Denoting that it is a piece of earth associated with a particular group of people, the suffix stan simply means land of. An ancient suffix of Persian origins, for many people, particularly in Central Asia, the addition of stan to the name of their cultural or ethnic group identifies that a certain place belongs to them. For example, Kazakhstan is the land of the Kazakhs. Stan's roots go even further back than Persia, however, to the Indo-Iranian element. Stanam, which meant both place and even more literally where one stands. This old construction is derived from the even earlier Proto-Indo-European root star, which also meant to stand. The use of a suffix to denote land of is not unique to stan, however. In English, we often use land to identify a nation or place, and familiar words include England, Finland, Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Poland, and Thailand, as well as Maryland and Newfoundland. Other languages use the convention as well, such as the German Deutschland. Adding an at the end of country or place names to identify a person's heritage or ethnicity also traces its origins back to ancient times and the Proto-Indo-European root no which meant pertaining to. More recently, but still relatively ancient, in Latin this element gave rise to anus, as in Roma, Rome, Romanus, Roman. Over the years, this has, in turn, morphed into our current ending an, as in American, Mexican, and Romanian. Not exclusive to national references, we also see this nomenclature in many other words like Christus, Christ, and Christanus. Christian. In addition, in English, this an is often modified with the addition of an i, such as in the aforementioned Romanian and Christian, as well as in things like Brazilian, Canadian, and Parisian. And if you're wondering, the suffix ish, such as British, comes from the Proto-Germanic suffix isca, which meant of the nativity or country of. It morphed into the Old English isk before becoming the modern English, Irish, Spanish, etc. Moving swiftly on, if you've ever wondered why it's lukewarm and not something like Steve Warm, well, want to know more. To begin with, it's because nobody likes you, Steve. In truth, it turns out while today using Luke to mean warm has gone out of fashion, possibly due to the popularity of the name Luke, at one time that's what the word meant. This came from the fact that Luke derived from Lou or Luke or Luke, spelled like I'm showing on the screen. This came from Middle English which meant tepid, slightly warm. This, in turn, came from the Old English adverb hyoi, which means warm or sunny. Finally, hyoi came from the proto-genamic hyvaz, meaning warm. The word lukewarm popped up around the 14th century as meaning slightly warm. Within two centuries, it also began having a figurative meaning that of lacking in enthusiasm. It isn't clear where the name Luke came from, but it was around long before the English word Luke and even before English. Luke received a huge boost in popularity thanks to the publishing of the Gospel of Luke, written around 70 to 90 AD. Speaking of names popularized by the Bible, Mary was the most popular female baby name in the US from 1879 to 1946. It was finally beaten by Linda in 1947. Linda held that position until 1953, when it was beat out by none other than Mary, which then held the spot until 1962, when it was supplanted by Lisa. Since then, Mary has never regained the top spot. Since Lisa, the most popular names were Jennifer, Ashley, Jessica, Emily, Emma, and Isabella, the latter of which has held the top spot through 2010. Isabella first debuted in the top five in 2006, appearing at position number four, and steadily climbed from there to number one, no doubt initially spurred on by the 2005 release of Twilight, with the main character being Isabella Swan. Since Isabella, the next most popular female names were Sophia for two years, and then Emma has been back on top for five consecutive years. Finally, ever wonder where the words geek and nerd come from? Well, wonder no more. The first documented case of geek dates all the way back to 1916. At that time, the term was used to describe sideshow free in circuses. Specifically, it was typically attributed to those circus performers who were known for doing crazy things like biting the heads off of various small live animals or eating live insects and things like that. Their performances were also known as geek shows. The word itself, geek, comes from the word geck, which was originally a low German word which meant someone who is a fool, a freak, or a simpleton. As for nerds, the first documented case of it was in Dr. Seuss's If I Ran the Zoo in 1950. The specific text was, A Nurkle, a Nerd, and a Seersucker too. It was just one year after the Dr. Seuss book in a 1951 Newsweek magazine article that we find the first documented case of nerd being used similarly to how we would use it today. Specifically, they used it as synonymous with someone who was a drip or a square. There are two popular theories as to where the word derived from. 
The first is perhaps that it was derived from drunk spelled backwards, being knurd. This was fitting to describe people who studied instead of going out with friends and partying. More likely is that it came from a modification of nut, specifically nerd, which meant stupid or crazy person and was common in the 1940s, directly before the term nerd showed up. The word nerd ended up becoming fairly popular in the 1960s, and by the 1970s it was hugely popularized by the TV show Happy Days, where it was used frequently. Incidentally, before geek, nerd, dork, etc., the proper terms for these ragamuffins were dewdroppers, waldos, and slackers. Other words that meant something similar that we used before this were panty waist, oil can, drip, stinkeroo, mullet, roach, snookle, kook, dimp, dwarf, squid, auger, square, joe zilch, and dud. As for us, we prefer the name we first learned from a quote from Chuck Yeager, and that would be sexual intellectual. Confused? Yeager explains that a sexual intellectual is a know-it-all. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. We got brand new videos every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Biographics. I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.